All right, everyone, because of the vast number of people completely misinterpreting my political opinions with regards to the 24 election, I figured that I would make a singular video on this topic just to clear the air. So you can take it to all the people with sticks derangement syndrome who completely mischaracterize my opinion, especially about Ron DeSantis. This is with regards to Trump v. DeSantis specifically. I don't care about Nikki Haley. She's, I mean, she's got a pulse, but she's an also ran. Pence, I don't like him. I made that clear years ago, and that was one of Trump's first failings, was choosing him as a running mate. That one, the DeSantis fans are completely 100% correct about, by the way. Don't like him. He's not in. He probably won't get in. DeSantis may not get in, to tell the truth as well. Tim Scott's now got an exploratory committee. Talk about jumping, talk about leapfrogging Chris Christie. He's like, well, I'll wait until the end of May to decide. I'll wait until the next round of economic news and whether DeSantis decides to get in. Tim Scott says, fuck it, I'm just getting in. And, and he's more palatable than Nikki Haley. He'll probably end up with twice as many points, even though he won't be the nominee. Uh, I don't have a problem with Tim Scott either. With regards to Trump v. DeSantis, you need to understand that the animus and the bad blood between MAGA behind Trump and effectively MAGA and some other Republican groups behind DeSantis is being carefully astroturfed. I don't believe DeSantis is the engineer of it. I don't ridicule or criticize him at all for that situation. I think part of it is Republican unipartyists that they want to foment a messy primary and they want to drag like the worst failings of Trump and DeSantis out and put them on display to handicap either of them. Because in such a race, it becomes difficult to win the general. DeSantis fans and Trump fans will both trade crossfire on who is more electable. I say fuck. Neither of them fundamentally is more electable if they get into a grudge match for the next six months or so. Here's the problem. What the liberals and the uniparty GOP want is for Trump and DeSantis effectively to crush one another. That's what they want. It doesn't matter, therefore, who actually comes out on top. If DeSantis became nominee, after fending off Trump, and, and it would get very messy, and, and it would be astroturf to be as messy as possible. A handful of MAGA voters, let's say it's only 10-20% uh, within the GOP, and that's just the component of MAGA, refuse to vote for him, because they're like, well, I wanted the real thing, not this dollar store knockoff DeSantis crap. I want the mean tweets. Well, that's several million voters. That has lost you the election in swing states. Let's say that Trump goes forth and becomes nominee. Some of DeSantis fans have latent TDS, and I am going to use that term, it's just colloquial, and if you think that orange man bad because of, the, you know, Hong Kong, uh, certain medical topics we can't mention openly on YouTube, that's perfectly fine, but he goes forth into the general. Um, again, it's a lot harder to get elected when you've got several million voters that effectively, if not, will refuse to vote for you, at the very least won't turn out in particularly high numbers. While I think Trump has an advantage in that two-person dynamic, it's not a huge advantage, admittedly so. Basically, we're waiting on the economy to collapse uh, for the Republicans at this point to even have a chance because the Uniparty keeps fucking itself. They keep giving themselves a reach around, jelking off their cock into their own ass, and they think that somehow this is helping them. They, they're going all in on abortion at a state level, which I've warned of is, is not a popular idea. If you're talking about a, a first trimester ban, viability, stuff like that, that's popular. The, the U.S. citizenry generally supports that. It's similar to the other countries in the developed world for the most part. Nobody considers that a stretch. If anything, the liberals were overstretching by saying, hey, I think that post-birth abortion sounds like a good idea. Let's abort kids when they're already toddlers. It's kind of Kevorkian-esque, and there are people that appear to have no problem with that, uh, or at least up until the moment uh, that birth is given, like instead of automatically using a cesarean, like they have no problem with punching the baby's skull in or something. This is basically Ralph Northam's stick uh, from Virginia of all places. I wonder why they elected Yunkin, by the way. That's not popular. The Republicans, instead of countermanding that by saying, look, Roe v. Wade gone, but we're going to have you know, a, a sensible sort of plan going forward. We're not trying to countermand you by simply banning abortion in the case where a woman's raped and she's going to die on the operating table if she doesn't get one. Uh, instead of doing, instead of being sensible, they did go with that line effectively. They're doing the same thing with the uh, trans issue right now. Um, the idea of drag queen story hour is a little bit different from, hey, let's disarm people because they cross dress. 
Yeah, that's not popular. Uh, it's not even popular among many right-wing groups uh, who are very, very gung-ho for guns. I know myself that I'm amenable to that concept. No, I don't want to disarm anyone. I think that we need ten times as many guns, just in case the Chinese decide to invade anyway. You know, Taiwan's their, their, their uh, first step. Uh, the next step's California. Well, you may be tempted to say, well, they can just have it. Fuck California. Yeah, I mean, I'm amenable to that too, but it is a beachhead, so we'll, we'll probably have to defend it in due time. With Trump v. DeSantis, the animus that I see boiling over, not just between the two of them, Trump took the first shots, admittedly, by the way. They're trading jabs and barbs. I've already weighed in, but I'll get a little bit more into that, but it's trickling down into actual people. They're seeing themselves as part of the football team mentality thing, but really you're arguing over who should be quarterback. You're not arguing over which team. They're on the same team. You're just arguing about who's going to fucking throw the ball better. <laughs> That's literally what you're arguing over. And the liberals, by the way, are loving it right now. And the uniparty GOP, like McConnell and the others, they love it too. They don't want their candidate to win. Mitch McConnell would rather work with Biden for another four years, or even someone like Kamala, than have to work with someone who's populistic. This is the globalistic uniparty on full display. And when I look at the situation, my main criticism for DeSantis, really, boils down to, I think that he's viable, I just don't think he would remain viable if he gets into a grudge match that's being astroturfed in this particular election. If he runs in 2028 having avoided that, he has it made. Whether Trump wins or loses, by the way, DeSantis can step away from that fray. Having stood down, he doesn't even have to give an endorsement. He can say, look, no, I, I, I was thinking about getting in, and people were warning that Trump couldn't win if, if Trump loses. Uh, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm the alternative. I can carry the party forward. I've got the political credentials. I'm the right age. I'm reasonably well-spoken. Fucking put me forward. And he wouldn't have that many contenders that would be viable. Again, unless Rand Paul gets in, I would probably support him. I have no problem with DeSantis. My main criticism after that, with regards to everything other than timing, uh, was when he chose to fire a shot across the bow at Trump, it had to do with the ending of 250 years of civic precedent. If you want to insult Donald Trump under any other circumstance, that's perfectly fine because he's already attacking you despite having uh, you not having gotten into the race. It's fine. You can go as dirty as you want. You can insult his family. You can insult his penis. You can talk about how he's not actually 6'2", although... For Ron DeSantis, that would be a uh, not a great pitch because I think he's a little bit on the short side. Physiognomy does matter, by the way, in presidential politics in the United States for what it's worth. Uh, any other time would be fine, but you choose the moment in which a private citizen Trump is being hammered, uh, again, by an activistic kangaroo court that should never have been convened with a grand jury. Uh, that was, the, the timing was a problem. The same thing will hold true if DeSantis gets in. And this is the other thing that I would say to his fans. I don't mind DeSantis, but it shows me a relative lack of strategic genius to get in in the 24 election when Trump, the quasi-incumbent, is already has already announced and is riding above 50% in the polling aggregate. Along with his choice of times to attack Donald Trump, and this is why DeSantis lost support recently, it wasn't just Trump is grabbing up his voters because he got indicted. Some of it was DeSantis timing. His lack of strategy with regards to when and how to attack Donald Trump was a problem. Now, if DeSantis gets into the general and he makes that kind of mistake in a general campaign, which is likely to be close regardless of who the nominee is, especially if Biden happens to be the opponent, because probably have wrecked the economy by them, but the GOP keeps self-sabotaging, so we'll see which one is, at the end of the day, which one is more uh, beefy in regards to its effect on polling and results in the election. If DeSantis makes that mistake just a couple of times, he could end up with a Mitt Romney binders full of women moment and render himself effectively unelectable. Um, Trump, meanwhile, he, he tends to get a pass because he's, I mean, he's gotten people used to the mean tweets thing. He is handled a little bit differently, I think, by the public. So as far as the Trump v. DeSantis bullcrap, reminder that all of the animus that you're seeing is an astroturf. Many of the accounts you see on the internet that are engaging in that are paid shills. I don't have anything against DeSantis or his fans, and don't rise up and bother doing anything other than rolling my eyes, even when they start calling me names, because I realize that in some cases those people just lack strategic intelligence, and that's unfortunate. And in other cases, they're literally shills. 
And there are people that are effectively paid to support Trump, too. If you don't think that he has influencers on the dole, uh, other than you're fooling yourself. This happens in politics all the time. As an independent commentator who is not on anyone's payroll other than yours, the viewer, and I do mean that explicitly, I have absolutely no contracts with a state, with a corporate entity, a business, or anything else under the sun, I'm telling you that I'm not going to engage in that bullshit. It's not helpful. And as a non-Republican, again, uh, there are plenty of Republicans I wouldn't vote for. You think I'd vote for fucking Nikki Haley? Like, basically, Jeb Bush with ovaries? You think I'd be pulling the lever for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, John Bolton or Mike Pompeo? I don't think so. Basically, Trump is uh, votable. I'd vote for DeSantis under circumstances where Trump drops out and endorses him, although I think that he might go ego mode and, and not endorse. And by the way, and this is something to look forward to, there will be Republican debates, despite the quasi-incumbency of Donald Trump. Fox is hosting the first one. Guess what they decided to put in? A loyalty pledge. Will you pledge that you will vote and support whoever uh, gets the nomination? Donald Trump should just say, well, yeah, I support myself. Of course I'm going to vote for myself. Who wouldn't? That's what he should do when he uh, becomes the nominee. Ron DeSantis, meanwhile, he'll be under that same pressure. It'd be really, really funny to see him have to say, yeah, he'd back the Don, because that's pretty much an inevitability at this point. Uh, but that doesn't mean I have a problem with DeSantis. I'm looking forward to DeSantis 28. Again, assuming that Rand Paul chooses not to run. He had a rough run in 2016. He really is powerful in the Senate and should be replacing fucking Mitch McConnell. Uh, that alone would improve our nation by 10%, just swapping out Mitch McConnell for someone capable of doing their friggin' job. That's about all. Peace out.